Hello, good day viewers. Today, my demonstration is going to be about setting up free IPA server and also a client. So what is free IPA? So free IPA is an integrated identity and authentication solution that is uh, actually let us go to the this is the official uh, page of the free IPA. So you see things like identity, policy and audit. So yeah, it talks about free IPA is an in integrated security information management solution, you know, combining Linux 389 directory server, MIT Kerberos, NTP, DNS, DocTag certificate. So what does that mean? So it combat that means it combines you know Linux with LDAP and Kerberos server, NTP server, DNS server, and a certificate system. So if you have ever tried to set up each of these components before, you know that it is not a trivial task. So but this system you know allows you to set up all everything you know automatically on your system so and this is what we are going to be doing today so uh free ipa is an integrated identity and authentication solution for linux or uh, networked environment so you can use it in your uh, in your for your official work uh, at your um your data centers you know for your cloud environment it is very useful i have seen this uh, software being used you know at you know very large organization and the good part is that it is open source and uh, it is free so let's go let's do it so to so in this uh, setup i'm going to be using centos server so uh, i will recommend that whatever distro you are using you should have the fresh installation of it so i'll be i'll be using centos or you can use whatever distro or uh, uh that you like so and another reason that you might want to set up the free ip server is if you are preparing for the rhc exam the red hat exam so the red hat exam some part of it you know needs you know identity a management server so this is might be a good thing for you to have in your maybe your lab environment or at your work so uh, like i said i will recommend a fresh installation and you should set up the on the for the server set up the etc host so let's go to my server so this server i have um it is a it is centos 7.3 so I have set up the host name. So the host name is IPA dash IPA server dot dollar stack dot com. So that is the name. And if I look at my SC hosts, uh, okay, I don't have Vim, but I have VI. So my SC host, I have set up, you know, the uh, DNS entry, you know, at least for that server. So you should have that. Uh, so. So the installation so one other tool that i, I may recommend for you um is uh before you do the installation if you are running on a cloud vm especially in the cloud environment or virtual machine environment you should install a random number generator maybe the rng tools or another option is fgd so these tools you know can be used you know since you are running on the cloud environment or uh, random you know if you have ever tried to generate keys or certificates on a virtual machine in a cloud environment you find that it takes a lot of time if you don't have these tools you know for generating a random num random number so i would recommend that you install you know you start you enable them so my preferred one is the half GED actually. I prefer this. So but before you can install the half GED, you should you know install the EPL, the help EPL release, you know, on your system. 
So to install a power release, you do something like this yum install a power release. So I have it installed already on my system, but I'm just showing you. So this will give you the repository you know to install have GED. Like I said, this is important for random number generation. So now to install the IPA server. So on the CentOS system, the package that you have to install is IPA server and some other packages you might want to install is IPA server common, IPA server admin tools, and IPA server DNS. But the most important one is the IPA server. So depending on your, on your distro, the name of this package might actually be different, especially Ubuntu. So you might see something like free IPA server, you know, rather than the IPA server. So I will, I have installed this on my system because I don't want this demonstration to be too, too long. I mean, the recording to be too long. So, but you have to install it on your system. So, and so when you, after completing the installation of this package, the only command that you need to now run is the IPA server, you know, IPA server install. So let's run in. This command might take some time to you to complete because it's going to do a lot of configuration in your system. So let's run it IPA server install. Let's go. Oh, I think my okay it started <laughs> yeah so first is it's asking me to confirm my host name which is fine or uh, asking me to confirm my domain name which is fine so the rem name so the rem name is for Kerberos which is fine also so password I'll put my manager password so the admin password also So, you know, it you know, says, okay, these are like some of the information that was gathered on this system. And it says, do you want to configure with this value? Yes, I want to do that. So it's going to do a lot of configuration. It might take, you know, some minutes to complete. So... I will be configuring the another system as the client. Right now I'm configuring the server. I'll be configuring another system as the client. So I'll be using, I have another server here. Uh, it is, uh, it is a Fedora 25 server. So this will be my client. So I have to look for the client package on this server. So I have to look for the client package. So while the the server the server is going on, so let me look for the package for the uh, free IPA clients. So free IPA. So free IPA client is what I want. So like I said. The name of this package differs. So on CentOS machine, you see IPA clients, but on Fedora, you see free IPA client common. So and that is actually free IPA client. This is actually what I want. So I have to install free IPA client on this machine. Yes. So I'm installing, I'm setting up the client. No. So let me check. So the server is still going on. It's still, like I said, it, it might take you know a couple of minutes, depending on how good your connection and how powerful your server is. So okay, the 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 
the client has been installed on the Fedora. So on the Fedora also, I would like to, you know, at least, you know, for the for the first time, I have, I have to let me configure the DNS entry, you know, for the so that it will be able to resolve the name to that uh, server. So my server is a um, IPA server dot dollar stack dot com and also I can put IPA server here I save this so I will also uh, I'll configure so I'll configure my name server to point to my IPA server which is actually here which is 10.1.1.200 so that is my I'm configuring that in the resolve.conf because uh, the IP server is also going to be my DNS server. So it's still going on. So uh, now I, I have to wait for the uh, server to finish before I do any other thing on the client. So the server is still going on like i said it might take one or two minutes or oh, you have to give it the time so what is what it is doing right now for example it it, it has already configured the ldap does configure the web interface so if you go to the page here so you say it has it, it consists of a web interface and command line administration tool. So you can have you know both uh, the web interface and the command line. So which is very cool. So it ha it has configured LDAP now. It's restarting some of the service services. So if you have ever configured Kerberos server on your own or LDAP or DNS, you know, it's, it is not trivial. So, but this uh, free IP makes everything easy for you. So still running. Maybe while I'm still running, we can continue checking out the uh some of the documentation let's go to home actually home page so this is talking about some of the things you can do you can manage identity you can you know do Kerberos authentication so and trust so for example in the uh in the rhc exam the rhc exam one of the topics is how to configure nfs and kerberos so this might be a good thing for you to set up your own kerberos server you know by using you know this free ipa um yeah still going on <laughs> yeah so that yeah and that is actually the most uh, the most <laughs> the longest part of it or maybe the most difficult is the that you have to wait for it to finish all this configuration let's go to the documentation Yeah, actually, training series here. Yeah. And another thing with this is you can have um, you can have multiple IPs, free IP servers in like in your federation. Yeah. So actually, it is done. So 
Um, yeah, so now I say you must make sure this network ports are open. So it, I it should open. So I should open, you know, all these uh, network ports. That's what it's saying. So. Uh, to open the network ports, actually, you have you can use firewall D. So firewall D uh, can help with this. If you don't have firewall D, you can use a uh, IP tables. But I think firewall D is uh, maybe can be more can be is a little bit easier. So firewall D had services equals to let me add HTTP, HTTPS, um, Kerberos, I hope that is there, NTP, and LDAP. Oh, add services, sorry. I think he doesn't recognize some of these services. Uh, okay, maybe I'll have to add them one by one. Okay. Uh, let me make sure that I actually have the... Okay, sorry about that. It is hard service, not hard services. So... So now I have added all the services. I think I have omitted LDAP S. Okay, so let me do firewall CMD lists or so basically, I have all these services. So the one that I don't have is okay. I have LDAP PS, I have LDAP, I have Kerberos, HTTP, HTTPS, and NTP. I actually supposed to have DNS. So and to the for the ipa install there are some options that we can have actually so for example there's one particular option i don't know why it didn't configure the dns but there's an option to also configure dns but when you are running it it might ask you you know if you want to enable DNS. So oh, I'm looking for the option, but yeah, that's fine. So basically, I have you know open the the firewall. So let's go to the browser. Actually, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me use another browser because I, uh, the other browser I have used it to connect to the previous IPS server that I have. So, so this can be reached. Let me check my DNS. Oh, let me check the host file actually. Okay, I actually have the host file. Let me make sure. That I have the right thing in the DNS. So. So this uh, 
this is complaining because I have already used this server, so it has cached the certificate and it's complaining about the certificate. That's why I'm trying to use another server. Let me try another. Oh. Uh, I have another web browser. Okay, I don't have another browser on this system. Let me try to clear my certificate. View certificates. So, okay, this one, let me delete this one. Okay, let me try. Let me try it again. Oh, ten dot one dot ten dot one dot one dot two hundred. Okay, so I I cleared my certificate, so now, uh, I am able to connect. So um, this might happen to you also if you are if you are using HTTPS, you know, and you are having problem connecting because maybe you or uh, you have logged in to that server and that server changed so you have this problem and you can easily just delete this certificate and try again so you see this is a dashboard actually for ipa i'm going to log in with admin the user admin and the password that was set so it's authenticating so you see this is our this is the dashboard that it gives to us so you see things like identity or policy authentication network services ipa server so you can do a lot of things you can you know add host name so for example this is host name for ipa server the dollar stack dot com so it already created this uh, us, us name you know for this particular server so go to the services okay network services so th this is the uh, dashboard actually so now let's let me configure the client so i will come to the to my fedora and i will run IPA client install. Okay, it says we will be configured conflicting service. Okay, yeah. So I it's complaining about my crony D. So if you I have a crony D that I already set up here. So ordinarily, it's supposed to be able to detect my uh, IP server, but it says DNS discovery failed. So it said provide the domain name for your IP server. Okay, actually, I know what this is. Let me cancel. I know what my this problem is. Uh, so this might also be a good troubleshooting section uh the problem was that my domain name on this server is different so let me actually actually rename this server fedora.dollarstack.com so the the this uh domain name was the one i used to use before so now i've changed so let me run the ip client install again so that's maybe one of the things you have to keep in mind is the domain name so, so this is complaining that I'm using crony D on this Fedora server and 
it won't be able to configure NTP. Okay, it's still not able to to get it. So, but let me put that the domain is should be dollarstar.com. So if I provide your IPA server, so this is my IPA server. Is it auto? Okay, the failure to use DNS to find IP server in case that your result.com file is not properly configured. Okay, let me actually try to check my result.conf again. Uh, I thought I configured it properly. Okay. yeah it's okay i will i'm going to continue so if you so i'm encountering these problems because uh you know some discrepancy in like in things like the ntp but if you have like fresh servers uh, or if you have never configured it before you you won't be encountering this problem but um it's also good for troubleshooting it is usually very straightforward to set up the client uh -oh, let's do yes so uh, yes okay so now it's asking me user authorized to enroll en computers so that user is admin so the password so now it is enrolling my client so you see it's enrolling the, the client and it yeah it's it's setting up things like uh ns switch the ssd kerber krb5.com file so it's setting up all these things so so what i want to tell you is that on on a good day if uh i didn't have this problem this is actually very uh, smooth it will be very smooth for you if you if you have never the reason why i'm having this problem is because i've I used to have a free IPA server before, so I I deleted the machine, so I re, I'm recreating it. So, uh, so that's why it seems I had all these issues. But if you you are having you know setting up in a fresh environment, it is actually very straightforward. So. It is it is still um yeah it's a fail to sell to update DNS records that's fine. So and I think the let me check let me check if DNS is actually running on this. So I don't have LSOF. Let me install LSOF. Oh. Okay, I don't have the DNS running. So basically, it has been able to, you know, configure 
my client configuration is complete. So if I go back to the uh, to the dashboard, I'm reloading. So if I go to OS, so now you see my client federal.lastag.com, you know, has been added. So that is so basically I've enrolled my client. So that is um, what you have to do. So the the, uh, the this the problems that I encountered um, is mostly due to because DNS was not you know enabled. Part of what this IPA server install should enable was so you know the should be the DNS. So but somehow. Uh, let's see but that's fine it's uh, ordinarily if i had not like if my environment is not messy the dns would be enabled so you you won't have this problem in your environment especially if you have a new environment so but but that's fine you, as you can see i have you know, I have uh, added enrolled a client, you know, to join this uh, free IPA. And some of the things that I can do, I can actually create user. So let's say I want to create user named Bob. So let's say the name, first name is Bob. Uh, last name is Job. Uh, let's set the password for it. So add. So I've created a username called Bob. So let's go to this client. Let's see if we will be able to see this user called Bob. Oh, it is not here yet. Okay, you see it actually it is here. I have a user called Bob. Uh let's I don't know why it's not showing up in the pass Etsy password box. Yeah, that's fine. But as you can see, uh, I have I can SU to Bob. So you see, you know, I didn't have this user before. So let's actually create another user. Let me show my just to clear the doubts. Uh, okay, you know what. For example, if I do ID on, or oh, what name can I use? Sam. I don't have any user called Sam right now. So I can go and create a user called Sam from here. So, so you see the usefulness of this. If I have like 100 clients, if I configured, you know, my, or, uh, can I can create users, my user on all those all clients. So let's say the last name is also Sam. Let's set up the password. Let's add. Let's go back to the client. Let's do ID Sam. You see, now I have a user called Sam. So for the same thing, if I actually go to the server and do ID on Sam, you see, I have the same user. So uh, I hope you see some of the benefits, you know, that you can gain from using this free IPA. It is very useful. Um, it is very nice. So some of the challenges I had in doing this installation, I am, I am sure you won't have them because my environment is messy. I can tell you that, but if you are using a clean environment, the only two <laughs> commands that you actually need to run is the IPA client install. Let me copy that IPA client install and the IPA server install. That is it. And you, you once your DNS is set up properly, you will be able to 
or navigate to the to the IPA server you log in you can do a lot of things you can you know do a lot of things from here so basically that's all i want to show i hope you learned one or two things if you have any questions or you encountered any problem uh you let you know let's hear about them in the comment section uh, thank you for watching see you in another video uh, take care bye